Auburn is down a defensive back, and it doesn't matter. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen Every single day, we're dapping it up on this Wednesday with the Daryl Dapperich Montgomery radio legend. Ton of different storylines to get to today. We'll, we'll talk about what was seen at practice yesterday. We'll talk about Auburn basketball and transfer portal. We'll talk about finally Mickey Dean being, you know, not a part of the future of Auburn softball and Auburn athletics, which is incredibly good for everything. But news broke. Yesterday, Daryl, that J.D. Rim, the Auburn defensive back, is no longer a part of the team. He's no longer part of the program. J.D. Rim, a former I mean, a four-star guy, I think he's very athletic, and he's a guy that we've talked highly of over the past few seasons since he's been here and arrived. I mean, he was one of the better Harshan recruits, if I recall correctly. And we heard nothing but good things about him, and then he'd get hurt or he'd miss time For whatever reason, doesn't matter. He's not a part of the team anymore. So you got to think he'll pop up somewhere else after this portal window. We'll we'll, we'll see what happens with him. But regardless, if Auburn is going to lose a position player or a player of a specific position, you want it to be defensive back right now because despite losing the bulk of their starters, they are absolutely stacked there. And I don't know if J.D. Rim really would have made that much of an impact anyway. J.D. Rim, if I'm not mistaken, was a guy that flipped from LSU. Is that correct? When Harson and them got him, I think that he was a sounds right a, a commit, which was a coup at the time. Uh, I remember that it was there was some momentum. It was a I think a Travon Reed situation that okay. he got him to flip, and uh, of course this was a couple years ago. So I'm seeing if my memory is not so fuzzy, but I, I remember it being a pretty good coup for Auburn to get him and. We started hearing some things in the fall when the You're season. Correct, by the way, okay, good. Yep. Um, when the season ended, that JD Rim wasn't going to be a part of this football team. I mean, that was the that was the scuttlebutt. That yep. was the word on the street. And then I was kind of surprised that he, when spring practice started, that he was out there. So now I'm not surprised. This news dropped today. It's one of those things. It's like inevitable. You you keep hearing stuff and you keep seeing smoke, and you know eventually the fire is going to come. And I think. Uh, you would agree that this is something that we just kept hearing on the back channels that could happen. And again, yeah. I was more surprised that he didn't wasn't gone yeah. after the season last year and showed up for spring. Yeah, and I don't think this is just uh, him looking around, getting the lay of the land and saying, hey, I'm getting jumped by younger guys on the depth chart. I think this is an Auburn thing saying, hey, you're not a part of the team anymore. At least that's the feeling that I get. We'll see. I'm just kind of reading in between the lines here. That is purely speculation. But we've talked about it before, Daryl. I mean, the the defensive back room, whether you want to talk about nickels or corners, which is kind of the two places that J.D. Rim would have been most likely to play, probably more outside corner, but I think he had the skill set to play inside if you needed him to. But, I mean, it's just it's almost an embarrassment of riches especially at outside corner because all of these dudes are now like just as talented, if not more talented than rim and they're younger, which to me is like, yeah, I I don't think you were going to play that much anyway. I think you would have been probably the, what the fourth corner, fifth corner on this team to go into fall camp. Am I, I think I'm kind of in the right tier here as far as placing him in this depth chart. I had him a little higher uh, coming out of the, I thought that he could make a difference. Keontae Scott. Yeah. Antonio Kite. And then I had him as the other backup corner. Okay. Just me. I mean that but again, that that's based upon physical attributes. Okay. Read between sure. the lines. Now, yeah, I mean, I, sure. I think there's some other factors. Here's the deal that people need to understand. I don't know why he's no longer part of the team, and I'm not going to speculate. I do know this that every time somebody jumps in the portal, whatever sport it is, or or somebody is announced as not coming back, the assumption is always they don't want to be at Auburn. They're leaving. That, the that's why I wanted falling. to say that, 100%. And, and it's not, so please pump the brakes. People realize that's not always the case, okay? There are times 
where it's the other way around. The, the portal, I mean, the transfer portal goes both ways. You lose players sometimes that you really want to keep because they go on to brighter pastures and in other programs like a Caleb Williams or a Jordan Addison. But sometimes it's the other way. It cuts both ways. Sometimes it's the school saying, we need to go out and find an upgrade okay, mm-hmm. position and we need room. So we're encouraging you to put your name in the portal and look around so that you have a place to play and you have playing time. It well, this happens. wasn't even that, though, Daryl. No, I mean, they didn't not. even make it to the transfer window opening up. It's not, and that's why I'm trying to <laughs> articulate this in a way. No, I'm no, so sorry. Okay. No, 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 you're not cutting me. I'm not saying it because of that. I'm just saying I'm trying to gingerly say that sometimes it also is more than just playing time or – I'm not saying in this case it is. I'm saying sometimes it can be when things like this happen and the portal hasn't even opened and you are encouraged to go elsewhere and look elsewhere. There could be a variety of factors here. My only point is don't automatically assume it's because Auburn's not good enough and this guy wants to go somewhere else where there's a better program. We need to realize that it cut that the portal goes both ways. Staff and players have the yeah. opportunity now to seek greener pastures, if you know what I mean. Well, we already saw that a little bit yesterday. We'll jump ahead just for a second here, but like with Katie Johnson entering the portal, that news right. coming out that he plans to enter the portal, I don't think he officially has yet, but there was this group of, oh my goodness, you know, they're losing control over at Auburn. And it's like, you're telling me, you're telling me that the staff didn't want that to happen. I'm not buying that for a second. So yeah, the portal is a two-way street. Whether you like it or not, that's college athletics right now until something changes. That's the way it's currently set up. And you're going to see teams react that way. So It cuts both ways. People don't yeah. understand this. They thought it was all about protecting the student athlete and giving them more options. No, it this actually, is hurting college athletes. It absolutely. Some, it's hurting it's yeah. hurting freshmen, incoming freshmen that don't have spots because of all this portaling, transferring stuff, sometimes don't have a place to play. But if if the player has the option, the team has the the team has the option. So that's, that's right. why, and we'll talk more about the Katie Johnson situation later. That I'll show you a key indicator when you can kind of tell where the uh who who is kind of pushing the buttons on this scenario. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll discuss that in a second. As far as the defensive back room, the lay of the land with him now, the guys that were older than him are Keontae Scott, Jaron Thompson, Caleb Wooden, Champ Anthony, and Laquan Robinson. And the guys that were fellow sophomores, because I guess J.D. Rim was a redshirt sophomore. I guess he redshirted last year, which makes sense, are Kay and Lee, Terrence Love, and Antonio Kite. And I would take all of those names I read over him just now. And then we go a little bit younger, and you talk about the future of the position with Sylvester Smith and Colton Hood and Tyler Scott and Jalen Crawford, and we've already heard such good things about Caleb Harris. It's like, well, yeah, the DB, the DB room is okay. But just for kicks, I didn't tell you I was going to do this. Since we're talking about DBs, as we wrap up this part of our show, uh, the starting defensive backfield is who right now? I'm going to go Scott at one corner, Kane Lee at the other, yep, Jaron Thompson, and Laquan Robinson. You're still going with Laquan Robinson. I just still haven't heard anything. It doesn't mean one thing or the other. Charlie Five and I talked about this earlier in the week. Just I just haven't heard anything about Laquan Robinson. Uh, I was talking to some folks yesterday when we were waiting for our practice window to start. And uh, somebody told me, hey, just calling it. Camp Anthony starting next to Jaron Thompson at safety, which I thought was interesting. You know, he gained 20 pounds from last year. Did you know that? He put he on still 20. looks really lean. But he put 20 pounds of bulk yeah. and muscle on. And I remember last year, did they not have him at nickel some last year? Yeah, he, he practiced at outside corner and then he played he played some nickel last so year. So he would he would be the he would be making the Jalen Simpson move then. So very similar to Jalen Simpson sure. following that pathway moving to safety. Interesting. Yeah, I think you're right. I That's think you're right. Cool. Yeah. So Champ Anthony, and I always think I'll probably read too much into this, but whoever they make available to the media, I think is telling. And he spoke to media yesterday. So worth following. Worth following that they think highly of Champ Anthony. And um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't able to make those. I was able to make the practice window that we'll discuss in a second, but 
several people impressed with his leadership, the traits that he ex um, showed when talking to the media yesterday. So take that for what it's worth. But J.D. Rem, no longer part of the program, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Wish him the best of luck wherever he ends up. All right, let's discuss the very few pra uh, practice notes from yesterday. Just a couple of observations, Daryl, and then we'll, I want to jump into some more portal talk. That's coming up sure. right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Better Together. Better Together is, uh, I mean, you could download it from either app store right now, but I love Better Together because it's daily fantasy sports, but you can play together. Daryl, you should sign up. We should play together. But also, I'm inviting all Locked On Auburn listeners, download the Better Together app. It's free. And add me on there, Zach Blackerby, all one word, Zach Blackerby. And we can, uh, we can kind of engage in some daily fantasy sports Together, it offers a familiar experience for existing DFS players with a social twist. It shows that synergy and working together gives you better chances of winning instead of just going at it alone. You make an account, you figure out who you want to play with. So add me, Zach Blackerby, all one word. And then we can kind of jump in and collab on what we want our specific ticket or betting slip to look like. So the bracket's already busted. We can uh, we can definitely kind of engage in some other um, other picks later in this week. So download Better Together now from the App Store. Sign up using promo code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, for a free $5 entry to any NCAA basketball contest. Remember the code LOCKEDON, all one word, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Amazon Fire TV. Daryl, can you imagine watching TV on anything other than an Amazon Fire TV? Well, I can say that I can't because I don't. I mean, I, you know, there, there it is right there. I mean, I have yeah. any time, again, the Dapperch household was a little bit slow to catch on to the smart TV situation. Sure. So we, and I had a really nice flat screen that I did. It was only four or five years old. So we just did the Amazon fire TV and the fire stick. And it would just enable me to stream whatever I wanted. And I really loved whatever. it. I mean, it was in different rooms too, which was, which was, you know, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. They recently also created fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free, including locked on check out locked on sports today there. But whether it's March Madness, NBA, MLB, they got a ton of stuff there. Trust me on this. It'll be worth your time. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. All right, we got to see a few minutes of practice. Kind of gross. Uh, it was raining just a little bit. Just enough to kind of tick you off, if you know what I mean. But it was still outside. Props to them throwing through it and all that. But... Nothing groundbreaking. We just saw drills, Daryl. A lot of drills, similar stuff. I spent most of my time watching the Buck linebackers, the edge guys. And I kept just kind of, I kept catching myself tracking Jamonta Waller. Not a tall guy, not a tall guy, but his arms are so long and he just strikes me as a football player. Just strikes me as a football player. And with at that position, I think he's going to get opportunities. They're all just because th that is a position of need right now. Your Jack linebackers right now, Jalen McLeod, Brenton Williams, Jamonta Waller, and Joe Phillips. And I just think all of those guys, the way the roster currently sits, they're going to have to all play. Yeah, I, th I think that uh, it, it tells me that also, I, I wouldn't be shocked if in the spring port when the spring portal opens that Auburn gets another buck. Um, I I guess that my question would be since I wasn't there today, but is is Falk not playing any buck? He was with that group. Yeah, okay. so it was just edge guys. It was okay. edge guys. So strong so, side defense events were there too. Yeah. So yeah, okay. So the Waller situation is interesting because 
He is a little bit small from a height standpoint, which you don't want when you're coming off the edge in case you can't get to the quarterback and you're supposed to just still disrupt throwing lanes and throwing yeah. motions and that kind of thing. But there is a school of thought with those long arms that that's not going to matter. And second of all, I've seen a couple of the defensive uh, line coaches talk about guys with that stature can get under blocks better. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. You never think about that. If they're strong enough, and quick enough, they can get under blocks with those six, seven, six, eight mm-hmm. massive offensive linemen. So I'm, I'm going to be real interested to see if that happens at A Day. Um, yeah. But just from a depth standpoint, you're right. I, I think they got to add them. a body or two in the room. You just have to. You need them. Yeah. And then with the strong side defensive ends, uh, TJ Lindsay, fellow freshman, was there. And there's kind of been questions on okay, is he a five technique? Is he a defensive end? Is he a three technique? Is he an interior defensive tackle? He, but 15, 20 minutes that we got yesterday, he was he was with the the strong side ends. So take that for what mm-hmm. it's worth. Could he potentially be a, a backup to Keldrick Falk? I don't right. know. I don't know. But it looks like he's gained a little weight. I don't think it's good or bad, but he is definitely um, I think even over the last few weeks, he he appears larger. So that's worth following. We watched the receivers for a little bit, and two guys to me stood out. And they also just happen to be the ones closest to me. So I don't think this is anything groundbreaking, but Cam Coleman is him. I'll say that every time we get a chance to talk about Cam Coleman, he is him. And then Caleb Burton looked really good to me. And, and it, it, they were, they were running routes against air, nothing, nothing super yeah. intricate, but there were, you can still tell that there are guys that can break out of cuts a little bit quicker than other guys. And, and Caleb Burton kind of caught my eye yesterday. I believe Burton would have been the heir apparent or the odds-on favorite to be the dude in the slot position. I really believe that when if Auburn had not gotten out, went out and got Robert Lewis. So I think that changes his. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know order. if I agree with that because you they think that they him, kept him outside. Yes, because that's how they used him in the bowl game during the season. He was pretty much used for the most part. As a slot guy, we kind of saw right. him get – I think he got the start against LSU when they went to LSU, and that's kind of when we started to see Burton play more and more. But then in the bowl game, he pretty much primarily played outside. The bulk I thought that was his, not a necessity, though, to me. Been. With J- Javaris been. Johnson, I mean, I, I thought that was like people knowing – and again, we won't know until fall because you're absolutely right. They may move one guy outside, bring somebody else in the slot, yeah. To me, he just looked really, really comfortable in the slot. And that does not to say he can't play outside and, and do well outside. Who he cut did he catch the big pass from he did from Hank Brown, didn't he? Was that I think that was Caleb Burton that caught the touchdown it, pass from from Hank Brown. Well, I don't think Hank threw a touchdown, but the or one that like where he was to yeah, the three yard line. Yeah, what it, yeah, my my old man memory. Yeah, it may have been. Yeah. It may have so, been. I just I don't know, but I mean, if you've it depends. If you've let's say Cam Brown still doesn't put it all together, mm-hmm. and none of the freshmen that come in that are there now or come in later are ready to play outside, then you move Burton outside, and then you have Lewis in the in in the slot. Now Lewis played a lot outside for Georgia State last year, which is interesting, a lot yeah. more than I thought. So maybe they're interchangeable, except for Coleman. You know that he's going to be outside, and Thompson's going to be outside. And Kane looks like he's going to be outside. Maybe the rest of them are interchangeable parts. Which would be kind well, I think cool. Kane's an inside guy. I and, think we're and, seeing and, more and Bryce Jay Kane Fair. as a slot. And yeah, Jay, Jay Fair, Fair if, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, based off of what we've seen and some of the folks that I've talked to, yeah, like you said, Cam Coleman's an outside guy. Robert Lewis has been pretty much exclusively inside. Cam Brown's been outside. Sam Jackson, my understanding, has been primarily an outside wide receiver. That shocks me. I mean, that's the thing. Where, I'm there that's with why you, I, man. I never – if you would have told me who is the prototypical guy to play slot with gadget plays and size yeah, and all that. Yeah, the former Jackson. quarterback, 100%. Sam Jackson. I mean, I was like, you know, he'll back up whoever's in the slot. I mean, because But I'm when you're just looking at him, him, like he looks like an outside wide receiver. Like when you're standing next to him and watching him go through routes and all of that, He's a big dude. Sam Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. I See, I, I, I had a hard time deciphering that because he had that stupid yellow jersey on when, when I watched him at practice. Did he have it on again today? hmm Yeah. 
So I, I had a hard time deciphering size and, and that kind of thing. I couldn't get up as close to him as I wanted to, but um, gotcha. yeah, it, I'm still real high on him, by the way. I hope he uh, is the breakthrough, the sleeper. I, like I hope it. you're right. Yeah. I mean, teammates talk highly of him. He, um, he's a smart dude and he's very seasoned. And I think he's one of those guys that you love to have on your team as a teammate. Like I can yeah. see him being a guy that takes some pl players under his wing as mentors. And I, I just, you know, I saw it a little bit when at practice, but I just have that feeling with his experience uh, yeah. and his maturity when he was getting interviewed two days ago. I really liked what he had to say. Yeah. And he's, um, he's a red shirt junior, I believe. So I think he's got another year after this, which I think as far as him making that transition and also with Robert Lewis being a senior, this is Robert Lewis's last year is my understanding. He may have a COVID year, but we're almost done with all that. I'm not positive, but no, I think Robert Lewis may be a super senior actually. So I think Robert Lewis has done after this. Yeah. So I think Sam Jackson potentially coming back next year too, uh, I think is huge. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Uh, basketball transfer portal and huge news outside of, um, or I guess in uh, on the women's athletic side of Auburn athletics. We discuss all that in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Just real quick, Daryl, one word to describe a Nissan. Just real quick. Versatile. All right. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of uh, the 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The North Carolina Tar Heels, they can only be described as an armada, Daryl. The one seed is as hardcore as it gets, and no wonder why they have secured a spot in the Sweet 16 against Alabama. Please win. Please win, North <laughs> Carolina. They're a favorite pick by many to make a run for the championship. So, uh, yeah, take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. Can you imagine buying a, a, a part for your car anywhere else? No. 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 Too convenient. No way. Too convenient, too convenient not convenient. to. Yeah. It's too convenient. That's right. That's right. They have over 122 million parts for your car, truck, or SUV, your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. I like spending as little as possible on the same thing that you can get elsewhere. eBay Motors makes that possible. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Katie Johnson, has mm -hmm. uh, in, it, it, he's going to enter the portal. And not a huge shock. It definitely seems like the Auburn coaching staff saw this coming. If I had to guess, he will not be the last guy to leave and or enter the portal. But, you know, obviously, thank you to Katie Johnson. He won two championships while he was here. The regular season won a few years ago. And then obviously the SEC tournament championship. You're wearing the shirt right now for it. But. I mean, it stinks. Like it stinks because like we all loved Katie Johnson, but this kind of felt necessary to some extent. You saw it coming. Um, I'll say first and foremost, love his passion. One hundred. He was a big integral part of, of a lot of special basketball moments for Auburn, and a lot of times when they needed to flip the switch and ignite some energy and get some things, you know, go you on a it. run. Yep. Change the flow. He did it. Yep. You know, and so. I do think there was some wildness in that with shot selection and some other things. But at the end of the day, you know, for, for the three years he was at Auburn, he was a tremendous um, fan favorite. People loved him. The other team hated him. And he was a guy that brought a certain persona and attitude and swag, like Chad Baker Mazzara did this year, to this team. But at some point, like we talked about earlier, the, the portal uh, – here, here's what I would say about this is 
Katie Johnson probably knew that from a playing time standpoint, was he ever going to get in the starting lineup or get more minutes as a two guard? No. Right. When Auburn starts reaching out and you start seeing people get into the portal last week and you see that the names in the list of schools that contacted these particular players and three of them are two guards and you know Denver Jones is coming back and Pettiford is a two guard or a hybrid, then it, the writing's on the wall. And it That's tells right. me that it's probably a mutual type thing like, hey, you know, thank you for everything you've done. You've been a great part of our, you'll always have a special place in our program. Yeah. And uh, it's probably just time that mutually we part ways. Yeah. I mean, there's not many Auburn basketball players that have won two championships here. Like he is part oh, of a special oh, panic. Class. This is what I'm trying to get away from, and I want people to really, really listen. And I, it doesn't matter because they're going to have their own opinions anyway. Mm -hmm. People, and I put this on X today, stop panicking when mm -hmm. players leave your program and understand there may be a deeper move here in play, okay? And trust Bruce Pearl. Understand that this is the the world we live in from co in college basketball. It goes both ways. Yep. And quit getting so overreactionary because a player puts his name on the port. I, I get it. You love that player. You had an emotional tie to him, yeah. but it's not chicken little when it happens. There's a reason. Right. And just trust the process is what yep. I would say. Uh, I'm expecting more over the next few days. Absolutely. Maybe even today. We'll see. Absolutely. Maybe by the time roster, this goes up, there's more, yeah. but um, you know, we'll react to those as it happens. We don't have a ton of time to speculate. We may do that um, later in the week, Daryl. I want to spend a second talking about the softball program. Yeah. It became official yesterday. We heard rumblings leading up to this, but Mickey Dean and Auburn softball, they're going to part ways. I think they're kind of packaging this as they're him retiring, which is great, which is great. And look, I think the hire of Mickey Dean made sense when it happened, but this has just been like, I, I don't understand how he's been able to keep this job for as long as he has. I mean, what he has done to this Auburn softball program, as far as like what he took over, and I know it was a controversy. I mean, it wasn't a good situation that he was stepping into in regards to all the stuff happening with the Myers family and all of that. Not great. But just from a talent standpoint, and like Auburn fans were so into softball when he took over, and he has just nuked that. Like he has just absolutely made it really tough on anybody covering the program, anybody who has tried to promote the Auburn softball program, Mickey Dean has said, no thanks, no thanks. And so whoever it is, whether they promote from within, I'm seeing a lot of people call for Emily Carasoni to be that. I think that would make sense. But whoever it is, you've got to get somebody who can promote a program as well as develop talent. It's not just about pitching. It's not just about developing. You've got to build the program. And that's what like the Myers family did when they were successful before all that really like inappropriate stuff started surfacing. But as far as just building up a program and marketing a program, like what Jeff Graba has done with gymnastics, I think he's a prime example of, you know, never turning down an opportunity to talk about his team, his girls, his program, explaining the sport if he needs to. He's done so much with that. Um, we've seen that with Auburn Equestrian over the last half decade or so. You need somebody who's going to market a program. Mickey Dean would not. I've never heard of a coach taking days off during a season. This is a very good day for Auburn that Mickey Dean's time at Auburn is is limited. I, I have a little huge. bit. Yeah. First of all, the promotion of the program, we know he did, he did not. He came to not Auburn when there, when there was a mass exodus. I get that. There was a lot of players jumping ship. He came yeah. with the reputation of being a guy that's a good recruiter and could develop pitching. But in the SEC, if you can't hit the ball, you're not going to win with small ball. There's mm -hmm. too many good pitchers. And you're not going to win two to one games. You're not going to win slap hitting, moving guys at third. I will say this: the interesting part about this is when Myers got hired at Auburn, the guy that took over for him at ASU at Al at Arizona State was a high school teammate of mine and graduated with me in the same high school. And okay. I reached out to him. I'm not going to say his name, but I reached out to him privately when it happened when Myers got hired, and he said, mm, "I don't know." He knew. He knew there was some stuff going on. So then I, re yeah, then I reached out to him when Mickey Dean, and he said, Mickey Dean's a heck of a coach in conferences like the Sun Belt, where they can win with small ball. 
But when you've got to be able to win games, sometimes 6'5", six, 6'3", six, that's where he struggled. He wouldn't hire a hitting coach that was successful. And from a hitting standpoint, they were just way behind well, the just curve. nobody and likes the guy. Like, I mean, no, nobody liked the guy. I mean, I hate. To say I, I haven't talked to anybody that works close to the softball team and was like, "Yes, Mickey Dean's a good dude." I heard and abrasive. Just, get that out of word. Here. Yeah, the word I described that was described to me was abrasive and yeah, uh, awful to work for. I yeah. don't know why people would want to play for him, and it's like, why? I don't understand how he's been here this long. He got a longer leash than most most coaches at Auburn get. I'll tell you that much. And so, so God. we'll see what happens. Um, you know, Auburn has the opportunity. I'm excited. Now I'm excited about Auburn. To go get a again. go get a name. I mean, you yeah. can go get a name. You can poach somebody from another Power Five school, or you know, you can do it here. Absolutely, it's, you've done it's it already. Been done. Yeah, it's been you know, done. you can do it here. So don't underestimate getting an assistant from a really, really tradition rich program as well. That might be a I'm rough for take. It. Yeah. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Daryl, how can people check out everything you've got going on? Follow me on X, DAP 6410, and with you on Wednesdays and Fridays, my friend. Yes, yes. Please like the video. Please subscribe. We will see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.